It has been a long eight years since the release of Beasts of the Southern Wild. And I say that because I remember absolutely loving that film when it came out. It was one of my favorite movies of 2012. And yet, I really haven't rewatched the film since then. Despite being a special little movie that is filled with heart, magic, wonder, and awe, while also introducing the world to an outstanding performance by Quvenjane Wallace, the film just hasn't stayed in the public consciousness. I've been waiting to find any excuse to give myself to put on Beasts of the Southern Wild, and now, I finally have one. Director Ben Zaitlin has a new film in theaters for the first time since 2012, so naturally, I wanted to check it out. And it saddens me to say that his new movie is disappointing. Ben Zaitlin returns with a new take on Peter Pan. This time, it's told through the perspective of, you guessed it, Wendy. Lost on a mysterious island, Wendy fights to save her family, her freedom, and the joyous spirit of youth. Apparently, this movie was a passion project for Zaitlin, which is why it took him nearly a decade to create the film. And passion projects are interesting endeavors because more often than not, we see the filmmakers getting lost in their own passion. Wendy is a movie that feels like it should be personal, but the film has so many abstract ideas that it's not. There's a disconnect between the audience and Zaitlin's vision. Every little detail in the movie is probably special or has a certain meaning to Zaitlin, but that doesn't mean they're important to the viewer. Despite having an immersive visual style, Wendy is ultimately a film that feels cold and distant. It has some heart since Zaitlin clearly had a passion to tell this tale, but that won't help you feel an emotional connection to this story or its characters. Not even the cast can do that. Devin France is actually fairly good as this new incarnation of Wendy, but the rest of the cast, which is comprised of unknown child actors, are pretty forgettable which is a shame. Peter Pan and his lost boys just do not stand out here. The film has a pretty interesting take on Captain Hook and his pirates, but by the time they show up in the narrative, you'll probably already be exhausted by the art house style of the film. The only thing you probably won't get tired of is the music. Dan Romer's score is beautiful when it isn't being drowned out by the sound of Wendy's very on-the-nose expositional narration, that is. The visuals in this movie are also wonderful, and oftentimes breathtaking, but the film does get lost in its own beautiful imagery, often feeling like a Terrence Malick film. And I know most other film critics have been using that comparison, but I bring it up because his avant-garde-esque style actually isn't my cup of tea so I didn't really care for the style of this film either. But it's easy to see why Zaitlin took this approach. It's not totally dissimilar from the magical realism found in Beasts of the Southern Wild. Wendy just happens to be a little more abstract and a little less focused. The film seems to be more about the themes that are present in the story, and not about the characters and the story itself. The movie is about mother nature and taking care of the ecosystem, but it's also about the joys of youth, coming of age, and learning to accept more responsibilities as you mature. But that's always what Peter Pan has been about. The themes haven't changed, but the context has. Every aspect about the Peter Pan story that has been changed for this surreal yet modern and realistic take makes Wendy a grim and even depressive experience. But Peter Pan is a lighthearted story. It's like all of the playful and silly elements were sucked right out of this narrative. And isn't that ironic for a movie about kids who never want to grow up? It reminds me of when Zack Snyder wanted to have a grim and dark take on Superman, when Superman doesn't represent darkness or gritty realism. Maybe Peter Pan just wasn't meant to be adapted into live action. I honestly can't recall a live action adaptation that I did enjoy. And that includes Hook, let go of your nostalgia for it. I mean, on paper, I thought Zaitlin's reimagining sounded really good. I honestly thought I was going to enjoy this movie, but it was so stylistic that I couldn't connect to it. Maybe Zaitlin just had too much creative freedom after his breakthrough success, but I'm still interested in seeing what he may work on in the future, even after this sophomore slump. 
He clearly has a unique directorial style, a great eye for fantastic immersive visuals, and a creative imagination for storytelling, even if those elements didn't really mesh well for this particular outing. So if you're like me and haven't seen Beasts of the Southern Wild in a while, I think it's time to give it a good rewatch. And if you've never seen it before, do yourself a favor and check it out. It's really good. Which is why I feel so disappointed with this movie. Because I would likely give Wendy two and a half out of five stars. Thanks for watching.